लास्ट वीक ओके 4.15 एवं नात्पाकृतम कर्म पूर्वैरपि मोक्षभिहि कुरु कर्म एव तस्मात्वम पूर्वै पूर्व तरम कृतम all the liberated souls in ancient times acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature what is this understanding of transcendental nature that it is in the previous verse which we read which is that there is no work that affects me nor do i aspire for the fruits of action one who understands this truth about me does not become entangled in the fruity reactions of work that krishna is not there is nothing which binds krishna in this material world all liberated souls in ancient times acted with this understanding of my transcendental nature therefore you should perform your duty following in their footsteps there are two classes of men some of them are full of polluted material things within their hearts and some of them are materially free materially free okay krishna consciousness is equally beneficial for both these persons whether we are polluted or whether we are free those who are full of dirty things can take to the line of krishna consciousness for a gradual cleansing process following the regulatory principles of devotional service this is vaidhi bhakti and following the regulatory principles whatever do's and don'ts that are there in devotional service by following that those who are full of dirty things can make can get gradually cleansed those who are already cleansed which is they are free from the material contamination <coughs> may continue to act in the same krishna consciousness so that others may follow their exemplary activities and thereby be benefited foolish persons or neophytes in krishna consciousness often want to retire from activities without having knowledge of krishna consciousness i do not desire to retire from activities on the battlefield was not approved by the lord one need only know how to act to retire from the activities of krishna consciousness and to sit aloof making a show of krishna consciousness is less important than actually engaging in the field of activities for the sake of krishna you know is here advised to act in krishna consciousness following in the footsteps of the lord's previous disciples such as the sun god vivasma vivaswan as mentioned here in before the supreme lord knows all his past activities as well as those of persons who acted in krishna consciousness in the past therefore he recommends the acts of the sun god who learned this art from the lord some millions of years before all such students of lord krishna are mentioned here as past liberated persons engaged in the discharge of duties allotted by krishna okay so propad is <coughs> saying that this um basically acting in krishna consciousness is what is being highlighted here um so we have to act for krishna uh this verse is not saying that we have to engage in the field of activities but not for our sense gratification we have to engage in the field of activities for the sake of krishna and by doing so uh others will also follow mm. uh, and krishna consciousness is not inactive mm. like many people think so this is very important that there is no retirement in krishna consciousness okay 4.16 kim karma kim karmeti kavayopyatra mohita tatte karma pravakshami yagnatva moksha seshubad even the intelligent are bewildered in determining what is action and what is inaction hmm? karma akarma now i shall explain to you what is action is knowing which you shall be liberated from all misfortune so because in this whole chapter um like in the previous verse krishna said that it is all about how to act in the art of doing work 
action in krishna consciousness has to be executed in accord with the examples of previous bona fide devotees that has been said in the previous purport also this is recommended in the 15th verse yeah which is a previous verse why such action should not be independent will be explained in the text to follow independent means not whimsical not like you know whatever we want to do. Hmm? so such action has to be according to previous bona fide devotees so what is action how to act in krishna consciousness that acharyas will teach us our work is to follow them so that is important to act in krishna consciousness one has to follow the leadership of authorized persons who are in a line of disciplic succession as explained in the beginning of this chapter in vivaskrate yoga the system of krishna consciousness was first narrated to the sun god the sun god explained it to his son manu manu explained it to his son ikshvaku and the system is current on this earth from that very remote time therefore one has to follow in the footsteps of previous authorities in the line of disciplic succession and this is very important uh, sometimes in the name of time place circumstance uh, we seem to adopt ways and means and practices which are not given to us by previous authorities uh, in one way it make it might i mean we, we may we may think that we know more than them and the reasoning given is that they were in the past we are in the present we know exactly what's going on around us so we do things maybe different uh, from previous authorities and that's very dangerous um, because we will end up elsewhere and if we follow the activities of previous acharyas then we will end up where we have to end up if we do our own way we will it might seem like krishna conscious activities but maybe over a period of time it will result in us ending up somewhere else um, different destination different from our from what we should what our actual destination should be so it's very important to follow in the footsteps very clearly it is saying follow in the footsteps hmm? otherwise even the most intelligent men will be bewildered regarding the standard actions of krishna consciousness see for this reason the lord decided to instruct arjuna in krishna consciousness directly because of the direct instruction of the lord to arjuna anyone who follows in the footsteps of arjuna is certainly not bewildered follows footsteps of arjuna means again following the footsteps of acharyas previous authorities it is said that one cannot ascertain the ways of religion simply by imperfect experimental knowledge actually the principles of religion can only be laid down by the lord himself the nam sakshat bhagavat pranitam no one can manufacture a religious principle by imperfect speculation one must follow in the footsteps of great authorities like brahma shiva narada kumaras kapila prahlada bhishma shukadeva goswami yamaraja janaka bali maharaj the mahajanas by mental speculation one cannot ascertain what is religion or self realization therefore out of costless mercy to his devotees the lord explains directly to arjuna what action is and what inaction is only action performed in krishna consciousness can deliver a person from the entanglement of material existence 4.17 karmano hyapi bodhavyam bodhavyam cha vi karmana akarmanascha bodhavyam gana karmano gati the intricacies of action are very hard to understand many times devotees want to know Uh, how karma works the answer to that is gahana karmano gatihi very intricate very hard therefore one should know properly what action is what forbidden action is and what in action is so here there is karma vikarma akarma hmm. karmano yapi bodhavyam bodhavyam cha vikarmana akarmanasch bodhavyam so one has to understand all this karma akarma vikarma uh, if one is serious about liberation from material bondage one has to understand the distinct distinctions between action karma inaction akarma and unauthorized action vikarma 
one has to apply oneself to such an analysis of action reaction and perverted actions apply oneself meaning that we should follow it and apply this understanding in our life to determine what is whether actions that we are performing is karma karma or vikarma because it's a very difficult subject matter to understand krishna consciousness and action according to its modes one has to learn one's relationship with the supreme that is one has one who has learned perfectly knows that every living entity is an eternal servant of the lord and that consequently one has to act in krishna consciousness the entire bhagavad gita is directed towards this conclusion any other conclusions against this consciousness and its attendant actions are vikarmas or prohibited actions uh, any other conclusion so prapad is saying here that anything which is not krishna consciousness is vikarma <laughs> to understand all this one has to associate with authorities in krishna consciousness and learn the secret from them this is as good as learning from the lord directly otherwise even the most intelligent persons will be bewildered and so very clearly i mean the vikarma in vedic sense is uh, anything which is not authorized by the vedas Uh, but uh, propa this uh, as usual taking it one more step higher and saying anything which is against the consciousness krishna consciousness and its certain actions are vikarmas karmanya karma yapashe karmani cha karmayah sa buddhi man manusheshu sa yukta krishna karma kret krishna karma kret one who sees inaction in action and action in, a- in inaction is intelligent among men and he is in the transcendental position although engaged in all sorts of activities a person acting in krishna consciousness is naturally free from the bonds of karma his activities are all performed for krishna therefore he does not enjoy or suffer any effects of work so that is action that is inaction in action so even though there is action it is actually inaction because there are no results consequently he is intelligent in human society even though he is engaged in all sorts of activities for krishna a karma means without reaction to work the impersonalist ceases fruitive activities out of fear so that the resultant action may not be a stumbling block on the path of self realization but the personalist knows rightly his act position as the internal servitor of the supreme person of god it therefore he engages himself in the activities of krishna consciousness because everything is done for krishna he enjoys only transcendental happiness in the discharge of his service those who are engaged in the process are in this process are known to be without desire for personal sense gratification the sense of eternal servitorship to krishna make one makes one immune to all sorts of reactionary elements of work so propad in the purport has has actually explained only one part of it hmm? which is inaction in action he is not explained action in inaction i mean the mon- main focus is saying okay inaction in action which means that even if you are doing uh, if you are even if you are acting but if you are acting in krishna consciousness then there is no result so it is akarma so actually it is inaction hmm? and we should also understand that action in inaction so for example if you are sleeping somebody thinking that there is no action but actually there is action mm. so we should understand both these but more importantly propad is stressing about how it is uh, you know krishna consciousness is akarma for point 19 yasya sarve samarambha kama sankalpa varjita ஜ்மெண்ட் <laughs> gratifying activities itself is a result of past karma we will engage in sense gratification as a phala result uh, as a karma phala of past action so here propa is saying that is why krishna is saying that 
that his act reactions of work so karma phala has been burned up so he is devoid of desire for sense gratification mm-hmm. see what he says in purport only a person in full knowledge can understand the activities of a person in krishna consciousness um, because the person in krishna consciousness is devoid of all kinds of sense gratificatory propensities it is to be understood that he has burned up the reactions of his work by perfect knowledge of his constitutional position as the eternal servant of the supreme person of godhead he has burnt up reactions by perfect knowledge of his constitutional position um, because he is surrendered to krishna and he is acting only in krishna consciousness without any sense gratificatory propensity that means that all his karma phala has actually been destroyed so this is another very interesting way to look at saying what is sarva dharman parityajam aham ekam sharanam raja aham tvam sarva papebhya moksha ishami this is sarva papebhya moksha ishami hmm? uh, so this also leads to another understanding so if 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 a person actually is not engaged in self gratificatory work uh, then his karma phala is actually been destroyed then question is what is the suffering that devotees undergo that suffering is then the mercy of the lord now unless we are still engaged in sense gratificatory processes then it can be attributed to karma phala but if a devotee is uh, not is 100% like 100% pure uh, without any desire for sense gratification then he, uh, technically his karma phala is destroyed according to this verse hmm? he is actually learned who has attained to such perfection of knowledge development of this knowledge of eternal servitorship to the lord is compared to fire such a fire once kindled can burn up all kinds of reactions of work so the whole idea is here the fire has to be kindled not just simply we come into krishna consciousness early stage hmm, uh, fire won't be kindled fire is just begun so it has to be kindled it has to burn it has to uh, you know burn um, with great intensity hmm? so then when it burns with great intensity then that per- person is not engaged in sense gratification which means that all this karma phala is destroyed as long as we have even the slightest of material desires it means that our karma phala is not fully destroyed but for those great devotees who have absolutely no karma phala uh, no sense gratification that means that they are fully they are, their reactions are all destroyed so nice this is a beauty of actually propas purport you know the same thing i would have read multiple times but it's so clearly coming out here you know in the association of devotees when we read true i have one question yeah um so uh, initially when the understanding is there that okay um any or we should only do a karma right and not vikarma or karma karma probably can be done initially when we are trying to come up uh, to the stage of uh, mode of goodness and slowly transcend that right but once we uh, understand that okay we should be only doing akarma means bhakti um sometimes there might be some subtlety that we might not understand that actually in there might be a subtle very subtle uh, sense gratification also going on with some of the activities for example we might be in a mis- mi- uh, in a mishra bhakti where we might attempt something thinking that we are doing devotional service but actually there is a subtle uh, sense gratification going on there mm-hmm. so now um when we go to a mature stage uh, then i think even that subtlety goes but what happens to the uh, uh, results which we might have mm-hmm. accumulated mm-hmm. even that will be burned by this fire or that has to be uh, followed a different price chitta right uh, no, no, no. krishna to... consciousness chanting hari krishna is price chitta for everything so basically krishna gives special mercy and um, before giving up this body basically it's all destroyed so uh, so the, the idea is that uh, you know in krishna consciousness now see there is subtle sense gratification now if there is karma phala coming from that then krishna will not take it seriously 
because there is a, of course there's the idea of sincerity of the devotee right if the devotee is sincere then there is no question i mean krishna will take away will take that away i, I mean that cannot become a hind, hindrance for the devotee to achieve perfection or go back to krishna because that is something in the past see the key thing in krishna consciousness in some sense right is the end state that we reach right uh, which means that we might have uh, gone through lots of ups and downs but if we are able to atna anta kale cha maam eva swaran muktva kalevaram yat prayati tamad bhavam yati nastya nastyatra samshaya even if you achieve this even at the last moment what complete purification complete remembrance of remembrance of krishna then we have achieved it whatever has happened before that somewhat becomes immaterial right so it will all get taken away provided we reach that stage if we anyway didn't reach that stage then we have to come back again for little more purification then that karma phala might remain anyway that see all that is in the that is krishna's hands what he yeah. wants to do with us right but generally uh, the understanding is that if we uh, are able to do antakale then whatever we have done nonsense is all maaf kar diya right nothing will remain okay bro yeah <coughs> 4.10 4.20 yaktva karma phala sangam nitya trupto nirashaya karma ni abhi ప్రభుత్వోపిష్టిస్ఫైడ్స్ he has no attachment to the results and he is ever satisfied ever satisfied whether success or failure he is satisfied and he is independent meaning he is not dependent on any other human being in the sense he just depends on the lord that's it this freedom from bondage of actions is possible only in krishna consciousness when one is doing everything for krishna a krishna conscious person acts out of pure love for the supreme person who got it See, this is the stage that Prabhupada is talking about. Right? When he says Krishna conscious person, it is literally Prema Bhakti. Right? It is not necessarily referring to earlier stages. Hmm? Because only then, all the anarthas, of course, I mean, it could also be Bhava stage, but even in Bhava, there could be anarthas, which can surface. But in Prema, there are no anarthas. so he has no attraction for the results of action all this even though it might have been seen earlier it might become it it may be reversed because of anarthas reverse meaning suddenly we might develop some attraction for something but at the stage of prema nothing it's all completely destroyed so that is why prabhupada is saying krishna conscious person acts out of pure love for the supreme person in god therefore see, he has no attraction he is not even attached to his personal maintenance see <laughs> he is not even attached to his personal maintenance this doesn't happen at earlier stage it happens only at the stage of pure love for everything is left to krishna the ashlishya vapada ratam pinastima nor is he anxious to secure things not to protect things already in his position he does his duty to the best of his ability and leaves everything to krishna and just i mean we should picture ourselves in this position it's such an amazing state to be in mm-hmm. completely depending on krishna not even for personal maintenance not anxious about anything mm-hmm. not even to protect things that is already there yeah? just do uh, act for the pressure of krishna and leave everything to krishna such an unattached person is always free from the resultant actions of good and bad it is as though he were not doing anything this is a sign of akarma or actions without fruitive reactions <clears throat> of course i mean this here see direct activities of krishna consciousness are anyway akarma but this is even if somebody by chance is engaged in any kind of work any other kind of work also but if he has reached prema uh, then he is anyway free from the resultant reactions 
This is a sign of akarma or actions without fruitive reactions. Any other action, therefore, devoid of Krishna consciousness, is binding up the worker. So this is akar- karma or vikarma. And of course, Prabhupada here is referring to vikarma, but even karma binds. So, of course, one might think saying that, okay, somebody who has reached this stage of love, why is he even doing anything else? Why is he engaged in any kind of activity? Like this might uh, be a Krishna conscious activity only, but uh, it might look for externally, and like for example, building a temple. Mm-hmm. Externally, it might look like ordinary activity dealing with, uh, you know, authorities, this, that, and all that. You might do something for may, protecting your interest. You might bribe somebody, etc. But there are no reactions to that because that person is not attached to it at a personal level. It is all for Krishna. Such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence perfectly controlled, gives up all sense of proprietorship over his possessions and acts only for the bare necessities of life. Thus working, he is not affected by sinful reactions. Such a man of understanding acts with mind and intelligence perfectly controlled. Krishna conscious person, but, but a Krishna conscious per, person does not expect good or bad results in his activities. His mind and intelligence are fully controlled. He knows that because he's part and parcel of the Supreme, the part played by him as a part and parcel of the whole is not his own activity, but is only being done through him by the Supreme. Amazing statement. Uh, a Krishna conscious person thinks that anything that he is doing, his activity is actually being done through him by the Supreme. Because he is fully surrendered. He is fully dependent on the Lord. When the hand moves, it does not move out of its own accord, but by the endeavor of the whole body. So, like this, if we are fully dependent on Krishna, then we don't have to really worry about what we are doing. Because it is completely Krishna's will. A Krishna conscious person is always doubted with the supreme desire, for he has no desire for persons and gratification. He moves exactly like a part of a machine. As a machine part requires oiling and cleaning for maintenance, so a Krishna conscious man maintains himself by his work just to remain fit for action in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. So this is also interesting. So it's not that you know we are engaged in some activity and it's taking up too much of our time and devotee says, okay, Krishna is doing this through me. No, it is not necessarily, if it is not necessarily Krishna conscious, then it is our own desire. So on one end, surrender means anukulis sankal of pratikulis avarjana. Now when we have, when we are doing things only which are favorable to Krishna consciousness, in that whatever we are doing, whatever service we are doing, however we are engaged, is purely done by the Lord through us. So there in that condition, we are moving like a part of a machine. Not if you are independently, like somebody might think, okay, I'm engaged in some software job. No, this is this is the desire of Krishna. No, that is not what it means. It means when we are directly engaged in Krishna conscious activity. Now, even in this case, if suppose say we are giving 50% of that income to Krishna, then it can be considered as action by the Supreme. Hmm? But otherwise, here important statement here is Krishna conscious man maintains himself by his work just to remain fit for action in transcendental loving service. So the focus is not the work. The focus is transcendental loving service. So, But he will work just to remain fit. Remain fit means body and soul together, you know, eating some shelter, clothes, etc. Bare necessities of life. Hmm? So such a person, he is immune to all reactions. Hmm? So he, we might be earning lakhs of rupees. But if we are using all of it for Krishna consciousness, then there is no issue. Like Rupa Goswami, 50%, 25%, 25%. Then there is no reaction. Then he is immune to all reactions. Mm. Of course, see, we also have to understand that you might not be at that level of surrender and practically to live in this material world, especially if you have to live in a city, you have to have some money, some savings, etc. So, 
um, um, Bhakti Vikas Maharaj also previously has the, the other lectures where he has said saying that if you are working with the intention to save money so that you can come out of this uh, you know city entanglement or working in corporate world etc then that is fine uh, of course we don't have to over endeavor there right uh, thinking that okay if i work more i'm going to get more money no that is again ignorance no? we'll get whatever we are we are we have supposed to get if krishna thinks that we should get more he will give us more that is not dependent necessarily on our activity no? mm, but um, we don't we, we we don't lose krishna consciousness we don't become work consciousness no, growth consciousness no, we might just work that's all as in instead of giving up work we might just work for few years and get whatever money but if the intention is pure see the idea here is not whole thing is about consciousness what consciousness we are doing things that is important like an animal he has no proprietorship even over his own body what and you know just we should imagine what does this mean uh, so this body is also not ours right a cruel proprietor of an animal sometimes kills the animal in his position if the animal does not protest so if this body is troubling uh, us then we should understand that you know it is krishna's will why krishna's will because krishna wants to purify us hmm? so no question of protesting okay it is krishna's will hmm? nor does it have any real independence so animal doesn't have real independence a krishna conscious person fully engaged in self realization has very little time to falsely possess any material object for maintaining body and soul he does not require unfair means of accumulating money he does not therefore become contaminated by such material sense he is free from all reactions to his actions actually please see if you can read these verses again very deep okay i think we'll stop here okay any any questions from anybody yeah apro one question i have so um in the earlier verses propad has written that even uh, uh, you know one should not be working for his own self uh, maintenance also and in this verse maintenance verse, no where has he said that uh, the no, that is only one 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 where the person has reached that perfect stage he might not even bother about his maintenance but mm-hmm. that is in the purport but krishna in the sequence of his verses he is not saying he is not talking about that stage but propad is generally saying that you know when somebody reaches that stage he might not even bother to be bothered about his maintenance mm mm-hmm. okay see we have to understand the flow of verses and we should understand the context in which propad is making certain statements so flow of the verse is the flow of bhagavad gita which is what krishna is a message krishna is giving and on top of that there is a more specific guidance that propad uh, will be giving and again for different stages of devotees so that statement is not for uh, devotees who are not at that stage of complete surrender for others they have to take care of their bare necessities of life yes yeah. they can't deal with their own life right as in there is no food <laughs> and we need food to live and then what are we going to do no krishna consciousness yeah. will exist in that frame of mind yeah okay any other questions yeah you have all sense of proprietorship over his possession yeah right this means actually like how to like apply what should be our task here so we should not think that we own anything we should always think that this has been given by krishna to me for maintenance see sharanagati actually uh, bhakti vinod thakur actually in his book, he has written the songs on sharanagati beautiful sometimes we will read that after we finish this bhagavad gita in that he says that uh, 
Actually, real sharanagati means that you become servant of your house. Hmm. Which means that you look at your house, your possessions, etc. and say, okay, this is Krishna's home and I am servant in this home. That is the mood of non-proprietors, no proprietorship. So, we always, we should think about everything as protecting Krishna's resources. Not becoming indifferent towards it. But at the same time, not thinking that I own this. That is that is false sense of proprietorship. Is that okay? Yeah. Sure. And one more thing, actually, like very first verse, actually, like at the last you told, there is no retirement for Krishna character's activity. Yes, yeah. correct. Like, yeah, definitely, like in our material things, so like, yeah, definitely in office and all, like, there is a retirement, right? Because the bodily strength and things will be declined. Right. So, yeah, like especially definitely there's no, but still, actually, like due to the or bodily limits, right? Or like diseases, like, or uh, like Krishna consciousness, like uh, sadhana, right? It will decline. Like, how again it will be increasing, right? No, no, no. See, we should understand there is there is no no stage of inaction in Krishna consciousness, right? Now, chanting Hare Krishna is also action. So, it's not only physical activity. The point is that it's not about, okay, I'm now sitting, there is sun, I'm relaxing. There's no such concept in Krishna consciousness, right? It's always action, right? Even till the last moment, action is to take Krishna's holy name. That will go on. There is no stoppage to that. And I mean, devotees. Uh, see, we see, we are seeing, no, all great devotees. Uh, you know, all um, gurus. Uh, they are, uh, in spite of their age and uh, you know, whatever external uh, you know, bodily situation, etc. They are just going on. Right. So, where is their retirement? There is actually no retirement for somebody who is. Completely surrendered, there is absolutely no return. Hmm? Yeah, it, yes, correct, Prabhu. Like, uh, usually, like, there is no retirement, but our, like, uh, consciousness should always, like, increase, right? Like, yes. in material yes. thing, actually, like, our, like, it decreases over the age, right? Correct. But here, actually, like, it's because it over the age, it increases, actually, that should be there. It has to increase. Ah, it has to increase. But yes. how to, like, it's, it, it's correct, actually, but, like, general, like, normal devotees, how to achieve, that's, that is my The point. same process of Krishna consciousness is the same. See, basically, what is the overall <coughs> guidance? Overall guidance is that uh, initially, we are working for our own desires. Then we slowly start cutting down our material desires. We work uh, just actually to earn money so that we can maintain our family, etc., etc. And whatever money is there, we save it either to use it for other Krishna conscious activities like preaching or going on yatra, etc., or to keep it as savings, which will help us come out of you know work at the earliest. Uh, now, when we are coming closer to the stage of getting out of work, which means that our Krishna conscious activities should have increased. Now, when we come out of work, then our Krishna conscious activities, uh, full day we are engaging in Krishna conscious activities. So obviously, at least from an amount of time perspective, we are, in, we are giving more time to Krishna. Hmm, that doesn't necessarily mean that our consciousness will increase, but by constantly endeavoring like this, we will get Krishna's mercy who will... Give us his mercy so that our consciousness can raise. So, process is this. By engaging in Chavanam Kirtanam, our consciousness will increase. That is Krishna consciousness. That is the activity of Krishna consciousness. Right? So, there is no yes, other... I mean, there is, there is nothing else. There is... Just the today when we are in the middle of work, etc., etc., for us, Shavanam Kirtanam, everything is a struggle, right? Is race against time. Um, like you want to do three, four hour study, but you don't have time. So all those things become cleared off when 
you know you have time for yourself then you do nicely chanting you do reading nicely you associate with devotees you serve so you engage happily in krishna consciousness and then consciousness will automatically increase and see the other thing is when the material consciousness reduces only then there is a chance for spiritual consciousness to increase that is the whole reason why we vana prastha like stopping this work business has to happen at some point of time because the more we are engaged in material work the more our con- material con- consciousness is engaged in those things so when we cut that off automatically our consciousness becomes so clear it might not be still fully krishna conscious but then first material consciousness has to stop then krishna conscious activities will increase then automatically krishna consciousness will increase still not ah uh, it's clear okay okay we will stop here ಪಂಚಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯಸ್ತಕೃಪಾಸಿಂಧು ಪತಿತಾಂ ಭಾವನೆ ವೈಷ್ಣವೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ